Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday, October 24th, 2023 Select Board meeting. This meeting will be broadcast live and recorded by Foxborough Cable Access. So we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Paige, will you lead us? Sure. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll start this evening with citizens' input. Do we want to say that Dennis is on? And Dennis oh, Doc's absolutely. Coming? Sorry about that. Um, I am pitch hitting for Doc. He'll probably be joining us a little bit late, so he'll be stepping in. And Dennis is on Zoom this evening. Dennis, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yeah. Barely. Can you turn it on? Okay. A little bit more, Mr. Beck, if you don't mind, just up. Okay. Okay. Try again. Oh. Um, so I don't think anybody's here for citizens input. Anybody Zoom or yeah, we have? I sent an email. Oh, I'm so I'm sorry. I thought you were, I thought you were one of the appointees. I'm so sorry. No. <laughs> come, come come right I'm, up. I just should I? I mean, I sent the email. Do you want me to just say yeah. what I was thinking in, or do, do, do I need to come to the stand? Yeah, absolutely. Come to the podium. Okay. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's all right. I thought he was one of our appointees for the boards. And I don't know that we have the email, Christina. Just so you know, just for setting the stage, like I haven't seen the email. Okay, well, it's not that. Should I just tell you what I think? Or... Sure, just, just tell us your name and where okay. you live, okay. and then you can go right ahead. Yeah. Okay, I'm Joe Sanders. I live at uh, 400 Foxborough Boulevard, apartment 8211. I moved here this summer, and I'm making my impressions of the town. It's my last town I'm ever going to live in, but I saw some argument, or what do you, I'll say some discontent in the paper, and I looked at it, and I thought, no, I think, so I, my opinion is, in, re, in, in, in reference to the selection of a town uh, employee on the select committee, or the committee for the town, I think it's fine. I think having one person out of seven that's, you know, got some experience, uh, I mean, it, it's a seven member body, and I think it's, it's, it's a good idea. So I just wanted to share that, and I put that in my email. That's the gist of, of what I wanted to say. And thank you for, for your service, that's it. I'm Absolutely. retired army myself. I'm, I, I do. Well, that, that's it. We're on TV, so I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I was just at the Veterans Service Committee, so I'm going to be joining that. You know. Great. But uh, anyway, that, that's yeah, what that's I wanted to say. Thank you so much for sharing thank your you. opinion. Thank you. Thank You're you for your thank service, you. and thank you for coming and being engaged as well. Well, thank you. Absolutely. All right. Okay, and then we're going to introduction to our new human resource director, Paige Epolito. And Paige, so tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you here. <laughs> yes, I'm Paige Eppolito. It's, um, it's a pleasure to meet all of you. And I, um, let's see, I am honored to actually accept the position of Human Resources Director for the town of Foxborough. I actually um, grew up in Norwood. I live in Walpole now. And for the past eight years, I've worked for the town of Milton as their ATA HR Director. And I'm actually um, excited to uh, new challenges and just concentrate on HR. And um, I won't be stuck in traffic anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a bonus. <laughs> um, what else can I tell you? Mm. you have any, any questions? I have um, collective bargaining uh, uh, you know, um, experience. And I, well, I've, I actually have 28 years of municipal experience. I started in Westwood. And um, I thought I would end in Milton, <laughs> but um, you know, actually, I'm just—it's I'm excited. It's you know, I needed a change, and um, I'm looking forward to it. So, we're glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you. She has a master's in human resources. I do. And um, yeah, yeah. Awesome. She's also acting. Uh, she's an assistant ATA for ATA. those who don't know at home. Is oh, assistant, assistant town administrator. Yes. So she has some experience in. Uh, yes. Administration. Oh, I thought you said well. ADA. Oh, sorry. So I thought you were. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yes. No. Okay, assistant ADA, town okay. administrator. Okay. All right. Great. All right. So well qualified. So we felt very fortunate when Paige submitted an application to have the opportunity to, to bring her on the team. And I've worked with Mary Beth before in the past, and I I just she's great. Um, she's been a mentor. Um, so yeah, she yeah she brought me on. <laughs> Yeah. Good. Yeah. Paige, uh, Dennis Keith. Uh, Hi. 
where, where, where did you uh, get your undergraduate education? I went to, I went to Northeastern um, and actually majored in accounting. And that's where I started um, my career in Westwood as um, in the accounting office. And I thought my goal was to be the town accountant. And I realized that, um, no offense to any accountants, it just wasn't my, um, <laughs> You know, I, I decided that I wanted something a little bit different, and I started uh, focusing on human resources, which was relative. Well, there wasn't anything. You know, they didn't have it in Westwood, or you know. Um, and I found that I enjoyed it more because it was um, something different every day, and dealing with people every day. Um, and that's when I decided to go back to school, um, and I was the assistant. Um, HR director in Medway for eight years. And then my, the HR director there, she was obviously, she wasn't going anywhere, so that's when I applied to Milton and um, as the assistant town administrator, HR director, and I've been there for eight years. So Paige, I know you went to Northeast and I just wanted to give a shout out from a double Husky. Oh, you are. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I did the the five year, you know, co op, co op plan. <laughs> Great. Sounds like we're lucky to have you then. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to say that I'm I am personally thrilled that you're here. Um, we had two roles that were um, open and not being covered, and they were HR and planning. Um, and you know, I feel like planning slows down. Uh, you know, things, other things. You know that's okay you know some people actually pr prefer planning to slow down but human resources from everything i've heard and talking to department heads you know what do we need it was human resources hr 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 and so you know you're it's really excited to have you here um you know your credentials are fantastic so i'm just personally thrilled to have to have that spot filled and have someone with your of your caliber and um just uh you know we'll leave you alone for a little bit to let you kind of learn the ropes and stuff but there's there's things that we're we'll be looking to do so um great to have you here and, and welcome thank you thank you so much thank you yeah start monday <laughs> Yay, good she's actually going to stick around though i think to for the um discussion about yes. since Paige is going to be involved in the town manager search i think she's going to stay around for that stay. agenda item yeah. just to great. great okay great right. thank you Thanks. thank you all right, so we're going to go a little bit out of order. Next, we were supposed to have our discussion about the um, town manager's search, and we're going to skip that, uh, give us some time, see if Doc can get here for that. And so, oh, my God, we're going right to your... I got a nice long short update. agenda we're, tonight. <laughs> I know. I, I'm like, oh, my God, we're already going to page. Okay, we're going to, to Another page. page. Yeah. Okay, so I have a few things to cover as usual. Um, last week we held a stakeholder meeting for the Central Street Uptown parking lot. As you know, we've been concerned about um, dumpsters and maximizing parking back there, so we had a, a good meeting with a bunch of the stakeholders did attend. And the next step for that is uh, a site visit. We're planning that for the week of November 6th. So that's uh, we are continuing to progress that project back there. Um, another way of progress is we have lights on back there. Chris has been working with National Grid. And finally, we not only got them erected, but we have them lit. So it's a big step in the right direction. Um, and we also got an accessible parking space added back there, which there wasn't one before. Or actually, there were two, but they were non-compliant. So they've been gone a while. And um, so we now have a compliant, uh, handicap accessible parking space back there, which is, a, is great for the community. Uh, last Thursday, I attended a Mass Municipal Management Association town manager boot camp. It was in Sharon. There were about 80 town managers, assistant town managers, and, uh, and wannabe town managers. Uh, there was really a lot of valuable information, such as ethics, handling challenging situations, and some other training opportunities. So it was a great, um, great opportunity for me to attend that. Uh, Mark Craig updated me on the one F Foxborough donation drive that was held for the migrant and transitional families that was held on October 14th. There were over 250 cars and, um, and it was um, 25 volunteers there that day. So they collected 300 
ba plus bags of items, plus plenty of diapers and wipes and whatnot. Um, so they're working on still sorting some of the clothing because that's always a challenge. They want to get it into sizes and condition and whatnot. Any extra clothing that aren't deemed uh, um, in good enough quality will be donated to the Bur Burrell School um, Textile drive. I'm hung up because I always say Burrell. 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 I always say that wrong. I'm like, which way do I say like, it? Burrell. Yeah. I, know. I was like, I think I just said that wrong. Um, don't hold it against me. So uh, it's been a tremendous outpouring. Bethany Chapel has received a grant, so they're going to be providing a car full of toiletries each month for the next year. Rentham District Court provided car seats, clothes, books, and baby items. So really, folks are coming out of the woodwork. So at this point, Mark reports that all needs are being met and donations are not needed. So we're in a really great position. Um, 495 Partnership, I, as soon as I left boot camp in Sharon on Thursday, I raced back here for a 3 p.m. meeting that we hosted here in the gala. And um, there was an ec economic development working group. We talked about a bunch of issues facing economic development professionals here in town. We ended up, of course, going into dumpsters, because what else do we talk about but dumpsters and parking lots. But we also discussed the governor's new housing bond bill, um, grants, and other related topics. We also served Allie's cookies, and they were a big mm -hmm. hit, so worked with them on that. Hydrant flushing, by way of update, we're currently on zone three, which will end tomorrow, and zone four begins on the 26th, so that's Thursday. Uh, the open space and recreation plan is currently on the front page of the website, I'm sorry, the survey for the open space and recreation plan is available on the website. That's gonna get, come down on November 3rd, so hopefully, I think we have about 175 responses so far, but we'd love a lot more. So if you haven't yet filled it out, it's a really quick survey, and uh, we could really use input from the community on that. If you didn't get out to the Gillette Stadium Lighthouse today, you still have two more days to do so. Residents can go for free. Tomorrow it will be between 11 and 3, and Thursday is between 11 and 6. You should bring an ID. If you don't have an ID, then just bring a piece of mail with your address on it within the past 30 days, and they'll let you up there for free. So. Um, Go check it out, it's pretty cool. Uh, Walnut Street, the, uh, our favorite project, the Federal Highway Administration has approved the highway permit, and now we're working with our engineer to finalize bid documents and the planning for a bid opening the first week of December. So this will allow contract documents to be completed to start construction April 1st, or sooner if DOT lets us in the road depending on weather conditions. And um, believe it or not, phase one building permit application has been filed with the building department. So they are working on that project. It actually might come to fruition in our lifetime. So after working on something for so many years, it's amazing to actually see progress. 131 Moore Street, I brought that up a couple meetings ago. Um, we have a great facilities department, and they actually, after that meeting, we were told by the state and the feds that we really needed to get it boarded up, that it's an extreme public safety hazard, and we really wouldn't want our, our fire fighters to have to go in there and save teenagers or whatnot. So we, uh, facilities got it boarded up this week, which is great. Um, that's something that uh, we've been concerned about for years. So this was uh, recommended, like I said, by DEP and town council as a liability for the town. And yesterday, Matt Brennan, the Board of Health, filed a Brownfield targeted assessment grant for that site. So stay tuned to see if we can get an assessment done. 175 Mechanic Street, uh, I know Leah was concerned about this. It is in tax title. Tax titles are creeping through the court system. Um, and it did recently cave in on itself, so it's looking really bad. We are well aware of that, and facilities is... Uh, in addition to working on the 131 Moore Street, they're also working on getting that fenced. We had looked at... Um, demolishing it, but with the concerns about possible asbestos shingles or whatnot in there, the decision has been made to just fence it. So we've been working with facilities and DPW and the school department even to um, get that fencing. Is we don't want to rent it. Is right in front of the school? Yes. Yeah, I noticed when I was driving by, the whole corner is actually caved oh, in. Really yes. So I was worried safety-wise when I yeah. drove by one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's something we are looking at, and um, we're actually looking at purchasing the fencing because renting it would be very ex prohibitive given that we don't know how long this court is going to take. So there's been a collaboration between facility, school, and DPW to kind of share. Then that way the town will have in their hands, um, you know, some fencing so that if we ever have, like when we have the project out here, they could use fencing. We're not always having to rent it. So it seemed like a more cost-effective approach. So the team's been really good. Bill Yukno is involved, like I said, facilities. 
building. Um, tomorrow, I'm attending a, more, a couple hours of a training session to become a municipal hearing officer. Yay, someone's <laughs> got to do it. We need it for building code and fire code uh, enforcement. So right now, the town does not have one. So I get to do that. Um, so I'll stay tuned on that. I'll learn what's involved tomorrow. Uh, we have a few ribbon cuttings come up, coming up. Allie's Cookies is opening uh, right between the old Primo's and Union Straw. Uh, there, it's this Saturday at 10 a.m. is their grand opening. Uh, I just saw something attentive for Joe the, Joe's Butcher and Bay, which is possibly November 9th at 1130, subject to confirmation. And then the Tritown Chamber has invited you all to uh, celebrate Northeast Health Services opening in Foxborough. Uh, that's November 8th at 11 a.m. at 225 Foxborough Boulevard. So we just got that notice today. Um, just if you don't know, I wasn't sure what that was. They're leading mass mental health provider offering therapy, psychiatry, TMS, and in-person telehealth, except all insurance. Paige, why are those two locations, new stores, <clears throat> excuse me, they don't need licenses? Which ones? Cookies and Butcher. Um, the cookies do not because they're not cooking their food there. They're just selling out. Okay. Um, the butchers, I'm not sure. They may or may not. The health department. They'll be the health. Serving food, so they yeah, so it's going. But they will get health department. And I think Katie's going to be on to just call. Yeah, I'd be curious about Allie's cookies. Just educate us on that. Uh, from the research I did, it was just because she's not cooking them there and she doesn't have seeds and serving it to actually consume the good that she produced in-house, then she wouldn't need a common bachelor's license. Okay, so in that case, it's that she doesn't have seats. So, <clears throat> Correct. Okay. The seats is what is the determining factor. Okay. Yep. Interesting. <clears throat> But the health department and the building department are both heavily involved. So they are not necessarily being licensed, but they are being permitted. So it just doesn't have to go through you. OK. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, with respect to transitional and the migrant housing, all 93 rooms are currently occupied. There's been some movement where a family leaves and another family comes in. Uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education C Commissioner Jeff Riley will be meeting with Foxborough officials on Thursday to discuss the impacts and sort of, uh, of, the, of the housing situation on both the education and the town. So that'll be a good opportunity to meet with. I will be attending that with Dr. Burdos and a few other folks to discuss that. Um, the pub police department was granted a $29,519 award by the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, uh, Securities Office for their Municipal Road Safety Grant Program. So that was exciting. I just got an email from state reps uh, Barrow's office letting me know. Uh, I'd have to get more detail on what that's for, but something to do with road safety. So that's always good to see money come in. Um, here's an interesting one, and we're going to put this on the website. Uh, I'm just going to read it. I don't know a whole lot about it, but the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services announced today that Massachusetts has been awarded a total of over $130 million via the LIHEAP program to assist low-income families with heating bills ahead of the 2024 winter season. So we are going, there's going to be an eligibility tool that you can click on and, and town, um, residents could type in their information and figure out if they'd be eligible. So um, Christina will get that up on the web, but that's something we thought was pretty important as we, you know, we have a high energy cost right now and um, it is income eligibility based. So there's a, we'll also have on there a toll free line. As I said, the town doesn't have anything to do with it, but it is something that Congressman Auchincloss passed on to us today. And we wanted to make sure that residents know about this possibility. We've also let human services know, so they'll know to direct folks to that program because they often see folks in need before we do. Uh, and then I have a few reminders. The, the old financial summit, December 5th at 6 p.m. here in the gala meeting room. Uh, the Pratt School, that bid solicitation is still available. Bids are due November 8th. We've um, been having a few questions asked and answered, so we will be putting out a second addendum with the question, uh, question answered. So check out the procurement website for further information on that. And as a reminder, you do have to register. In order to get the information, it's not open to everybody. Hazardous Waste Day is still scheduled for November 4th, 9 to 12, at the Highway Garage. Um, check out the DPW website for more info on that, and that is residents only. Then um, current open positions, we, um, which Paige will be working on, and is we're already working on, is our Board of Health Health Inspector. We still haven't been able to fill that role, unfortunately, and, and Matt is 
would very much like to get that role filled. So if you know anybody who's qualified, please send them our way. Then I have our construction updates. The new sidewalk on Cocasset Street from Ledgeville to Chestnut. The existing survey, condition survey and design plan are being prepared by Bay Colony and construction is uh, anticipated for spring 2024. So the folks in that area will be glad to see a new sidewalk. Um, South Street and Cedar Street raw ma water main, Sprague Road to Witch Pond, and it's reached the West Street intersection as it continues down South Street. East Street and Cocasset Street reconstruction. Construction is now substantially complete for this project and no further delays are inspected. They still have to do some remove signage, install a rectangular rapid flashing beacon at the crosswalk, and that's, that's going to take about six weeks while they wait for equipment. They've had to install some additional cones because drivers are adjusting to the new uh, pattern. Has anybody seen on social media? People are driving across lawns and driveways. It's yeah. pretty scary. So they've had to put cones out there. Um, and they're working on planting trees within the travel way to kind of show people. Oh, good. We're docks here, and we're almost done. North Street. And water main upgrade, um, that, that design is nearly complete. Next, we're going to have to file a permit with MassDOT for the railroad crossing, and that will go out to construction sometime in 2024. And then my last two uh, miscellaneous updates is that there's a, 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 the pumpkin patch will be back around the common. That's going to be on Saturday. This Saturday, you'll see the pumpkins lining the common again. And then Katie recommended I let everybody remind everybody that the fire department's annual open house is this Saturday. Saturday's a busy day from 11 to 2. Um, so it's uh, going to be, I think, a touch truck, pot pizza, f um, firefighter demo, face painting, and you can meet Sparky. And I think that's all I have. That's it. What is it? Oh, that's not on my list. Sorry. <laughs> National Drug Tag Take Back Day is when? Do you know? Saturday from at Public Safety from nine to one. Oh, sorry. It wasn't on my my four pages. So everything's no, on, Saturday. on Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> everything's on Saturday. Question page. Um, any updates or news on the um, auditorium on Payson Road? Sort of. Um, we're working on it. Yeah. I did have a meeting last, two weeks ago and today with DCAM uh, talking about the possibility of removing restrictions and they are, are at the table. They're actually quite interested in working with the community. I mean DCAM is what? <laughs> Department of Capital Asset Management, okay. um, and it's because, if you recall, the town owns it, right. but the state gave it to the town with mm -hmm. restrictions, and if you read the deed, that if, they, if we don't follow X, Y, and Z, it could go back to the state. Uh, oh. Well, yeah, but then you never know <laughs> what could us. go there. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. Then you don't know what, you know, then the state has it. So we did reach out to them and said, hey, if we want to do something a little different than what's yeah. contemplated in the deed, which we don't know yet, and um, Jay Barros and S uh, Paul Feeney arranged a meeting with them. We had it in here with like 10 of us, and they were fabulous. They were like, we will work with the town, whatever you want. We don't want it back. Let's figure it out. So making progress. Great. So stay tuned. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. All right. Okay, so we're going to just continue with and do Selectman's update, and then we'll circle back up to the town manager discussion. Um, so for Selectman's update, um, just want to remind everybody um, uh, the veterans will be holding their Veterans Day celebration on November 11th, 11 o'clock at Foxborough High School. Um, veterans agent Scott Blake was in, is in charge of, of this will be his, his first uh, his first Veterans Day. So good luck to you, Scott. Um, uh, Pastor Dudley is supposed to be speaking, and I think they're going to be uh, there's some type of honoring of um, beloved Jack Othwellette, uh who served in the Army. So just keep that on your calendars. Um, also, we have the Halloween parade this Saturday, 1028. Um, starts at um, Town Hall parking lot at uh, 2.30, uh, goes till 4 o'clock, and following that is uh, the Emanuel Church Fall Festival right after that at 4 o'clock. So if you're up, up in this area, you can head over the Emanuel afterwards. Um, I just want to, I want to add one thing, just a, a shout out to um, all the people who were inducted into the, um, the Foxborough High School mm -hmm. Hall, of, Hall of Fame. Um, 
I believe well, it's, it's all it's all sports re it's all sports related, you know, in some way. But anyhow, um, just shout out the first. This is the uh, the first class inducted um, is Joni Goodwin, Joe Joe Heinricher, Bobby Morshed, Tommy Nalen, Sarah Bain, the 1987 girls soccer team, and Jack Martinelli. Um, we we were there. Um, obvi obviously, um, my husband uh, Jack Martinelli has been coaching football for. 40 plus years. Um, my husband's been an assistant coach for 37 of those 41. Doc has been on that sideline for 30 plus years. 34. 34 years. So, um, and um, so we were there where we, uh, Joni Goodwin, when I coached at the high school, she drove buses for, everyone knows Joni Goodwin anyhow, she don't have to speak of her. And we were actually, we uh, very, very close with a personal friend of Joe Heinrichers. So we made sure to <coughs> get there, but, Man, um, all those people inducted, very impressive, res you know, uh, uh, history in, in Foxborough sports. And um, I, I just have to add at the end of that, um, congratulations to Jack Martinelli, what a weekend it was for him. Uh, won <clears throat> his Friday night, won his 300th game. Um, so he him, won his 300th before- uh, Before Mr. Belichick <laughs> did, <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. And um, I believe that puts him in like, I think there's only himself and maybe four other coaches, I believe, that have hit that milestone. So, and by the way, didn't know what was happening, but I saw it on Facebook today. He was also the Patriots named him Coach of the Week. So um, he was, got a plaque from Andre Tippett this morning at the high school. Um, all the the boys, the football team was there. It seemed like it, like it was a great time, and uh, they also make a donation to the program. So anyhow, so nice, nice weekend for, for Foxborough sports as well. And um, anybody else have anything for Selectman's update? It's quite yeah, an update. Right. So, so, so we're gonna, you wanna circle, circle so. back to the, um, to, to the, or do you wanna do the action items? No, let's do the uh, town manager All right, perfect. Uh, thank you, and thank you everybody. Uh, apologize for what I'm not used to working in town and living in town, and that's that uh, traffic on the Southeast Expressway when you fly in from Logan <laughs> at the wrong time of the day. Uh, so we're gonna circle around uh, we'll town manager search. So we have a search committee almost uh, together. What we ended up doing for the search, we had 17 applicants. Uh, three of them were town employees, so we carved them out. Uh, all five of us got all 17 applications and we rated from one to six who we wanted, who we potentially would want to see on that uh, search committee. The uh, numbers were tabulated by our new uh, human resources director, Paige Apolito and Christina, uh, and we got our six um, members. Now, one of those members, just uh, to let everybody know, couldn't commit to all the time requirements so they bowed out, uh, and the seventh person on the list uh, uh, jumped up and became our sixth for that committee. The uh, three members of, of the town, uh, there was a tie. So we are going to discuss that in open session and vote on it, uh, who we think would be uh, best uh, for that town employee. And again, it's a town employee but it's the search committee. They are not choosing who's gonna be our next town manager. We will be choosing the five of us. Uh, hi, Dennis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the five of us will be choosing, ultimately, the next town manager. So having said that, we'll now open it. Oh, um, I apologize. Let me um, uh, uh, tell you publicly who the uh, six were that made it. Um, I've got, uh, here we go. And in no particular order, this isn't uh, one through six, it's just uh, 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 how we listed it. Uh, Celia Bechtel, Chris Mitchell, Elizabeth Langs, J. Catherine Rollins, John Riley, and Deb Giardino. Uh, so those, uh, and, and again, uh, everybody I think on the board, all, all 17, but certainly the 14 from the town, they were all great applicants. You know, they, they uh, I, I know my decision was kind of difficult. Um, 
There were quite a few that, that, that had some great uh, history or, or, or some great background. Having said that, the two that uh, were the town employees, uh, it was uh, Chris. Okay, Dennis is waving his hand. Oh, sorry, Dennis. Go ahead. Uh, plus, plus, I had myself on, on mute, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, are you able to uh, disclose who the person was that withdrew? I, I, I don't think there's necessarily a need for that, unless the board That's wants a, me to. No, I don't think we need. I don't think we need to. That's why I said they. Tell them later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll talk, yeah, but obviously anybody can find out. Um, and uh, Bob Cutler was the other uh, town employee, so uh, open for discussion. <clears throat> Do okay. we want a motion for the Ooh. the folks that you just discussed? We, we could do that and, and get that done, sure, okay. good idea. Okay, motion to appoint Celia Bechtel, Chris Mitchell, Elizabeth Lines, J. Catherine Rollins, John Riley, and Deb Giardino to the 2023 Town Manager Search Screening Committee for a term to end June 30th, 2024. Second. Okay, any further discussion of those six? Could I just reiterate what you said? Wow, some great yeah. people came forward. Um, honestly, I, I, I was shocked at how much, how many people had such a strong HR background, and so um, people were, that had done this before on other yeah. screening committees. Yeah. Exactly. I, mean, I think so, there were five or six that had strong human resources. Yeah, backgrounds. Yeah. Exactly. So, really, I, I can't emphasize that enough. To really impressive. Yeah. Pool. And 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 like you said, thank you to everybody. It was you know it was nice to see such a large amount of people. Come, come forward. Mm. So I just want to, like, it, it was it was hard for me too. I re, I was making little piles. How much experience, whatever. <laughs> but you know. But any anyhow, yeah. But thank you to everyone that applied as well. So we really appreciate the engagement. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. All right. Uh, roll call. Leah, yes. Mark, yes. Stephanie, yes. Seth, yes. Dennis, yes. Okay, great. Okay, open for discussion. Um, I'll st if you want, I'll start unless anybody else wants to start. You know me, you never mince for words, right? I was shocked it took you this long. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I get, listen, very, very clear cut. I mean, obviously, um, the vote was 3-2 <clears throat> to, to, to put um, an employee on. Um, honestly, I, I really would have rather, you know, still would have rather no employee. Um, I, I am going to, I'm, I'm going to say that um, I am getting behind Bob Cutler for the only reason is that, you know, he, he's an employee, so we hit the, hit the employee, and um, the fact that he's elected and that he doesn't answer the town manager, he's not, um, not going to be involved in um, any contract negotiations or anything like that. Um, all three, I mean, the three, three um, employees that came forward were all wonderful. I mean, I could have I flipped a coin. I could have had any of them. Um, I, I just kind of, I kind of feel like, I'm just going to throw this out there. I kind of feel like it might, and I, I don't want to speak for you because I know you, you were a, a no vote for employees, so I'll let you say your own, but I just, just, I just said that it was 3-2, so it wasn't like we were unanimous or I was the only one that didn't, didn't want an employee. I kind of feel like if we were to pick Bob, um, it might be a happy medium for the whole board. Like I feel like it, it would it would make me happy. I, I'm going to go right on the record. I would have rather not even Bob. You know how I originally felt. Um, <coughs> that's the only reason why I'm advocating for him over any of the other two employees. So well, you can say bad anything bad about all of them. So so basically, I kind of feel like that might be a happy medium. Um, I'm not going to talk for Seth. It would make me happy because I feel like there's, it, it's kind of like a Bill Euchner the first time around, you know, employee. So, so that's the only reason that um, I, and I think any of the three would have done a wonderful job. Anybody else? Um, I'm, Dennis has his hand up. Just go ahead, Dennis. Yeah, please. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll uh, echo what uh, what Stephanie said. Um, all three outstanding, very difficult decision. Uh, <clears throat> to give my, uh, us e some equal time, 
I, I, I did favor having an employee, you know, and I think that was the discussion that we all had and voted on. So, uh, but I, I went with Bob Cutler. Um, I think they're all outstanding. And um, I think just in terms of his overall experience in doing this, in doing this kind of work, I think I went with him. And I think I may be wrong on this, but I think he has more experience than, than uh, the other two uh, uh, employee candidates. So when, you, when all else fails, you go with, you know, the person that's had the most time in, the most hours in, and the most experience. And plus, he's, you know, he does a really effective job in his current role. Well, I'm going to talk on the other side then. Um, you know, I, th I think, and it's Chris Gallagher. I apologize. I didn't mention his last name earlier. Um, I, I think if we're going to have an a town employee, uh, I think it should be someone on the operations side. I think it's someone who should be uh, part of the ops team, uh, actually uh, in the, uh, the trenches of, of, of working um, as a senior manager uh, here in the town. Uh, and that's why I was leaning more towards uh, or, or all the way for uh, an operations um, member of the team. Anybody else? Good. Okay. I, 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 um, I would take both of them. Oh, wait, <laughs> you oh, know, I feel, I mean, one. if it didn't oh. give us an, an odd number, I, I would, you know, I think that they both bring different aspects. And I agree with Doc that, you know, Bob has the elected official piece. Um, I do value that Chris is part of the operations team. Um, so, again, it's, it's a really tough decision, and you can't go wrong either way. It's one of these decisions, you know, that I, I hate to make. Because we could, we could have either or both, and it would be fabulous. Okay, so um, I guess just just a show of hands. If no one else wants to say anything. Um, well, someone, well so, no, we got to do. Make a, some, someone make a is motion. Is it a motion? And see. Should it be a motion? Yeah. yeah. So why don't you go ahead and? and I will and, because, because I right. because I have advocated. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we pick Bob Cutler to serve on the town manager search committee. Second. Okay. Any further <laughs> discussion? Roll call. Uh, Leah, yes. Mark, no. Stephanie, yes. Seth, yes. Dennis, yes. There we go. Bob Coupler, if you're listening, congratulations. Awesome. So we've got our one, two, three. That's seven total now. That's our seven. Okay. Um, so we don't have to make another vote. We just made a vote. Yep. Okay, great. And we did the term ND, right? Yep. Did you have a term ending? Uh, we didn't have a term ending. Stuff. So oh, you, um, just to clarify, it's for a term ending June 30th, 2024. Same as the rest of the term, the board. Okay. All right. Uh, action items. Oh, well, we got one oh. more. Um, Did I miss something? I apologize. Just, just review and next steps. Is there anything oh, yeah, else, yeah. Oh, anything I, else oh. we want to say about, you know, where we are? Or uh, Right now where we are is at... Um, a uh, little bit of a lull. Uh, there's going to be a meeting with our advisor, Bernie Lynch, with th this team in another couple of weeks. Uh, I believe, I don't have it in front of me, November 2nd, does that sound right? Um, it's, it hasn't been determined yet. We were waiting for this committee to be formed, so they'll choose from they'll have a, a, three dates. A, yeah, they'll, they'll all have a meeting on, on their responsibilities, and then there'll be <laughs> two, three, maybe four meetings uh, to review the um, applications. That'll all be in November, though. Uh, so that's where we're at for the next uh, two It's crazy. We're two almost at November. A couple <laughs> more days. The job is up. I saw it. It's posted just to, you know, I don't know if we've said that, if it came out after our last meeting, but. All right. <clears throat> action items. All right. So we've got four action items. So motion to approve the sign and street acceptances for Barrows Lane and Sousa Avenue. Second. Leah, yes. Mark, yes. Stephanie, yes. Seth, yes. And it's yes. Motion to appoint Maureen Dunphy as an associate member of the Board of Recreation for a term to end May 31st, 2026. Second. Any further discussion? Leah, yes. Mark, yes. Stephanie, yes. Seth, yes. Motion Dennis, to yes. Oh, so I'm sorry. Okay. Dennis said again. yes. Sorry. Motion to appoint Michael Etsy as constable for a term to end January 31st, 2025. Second. Any further discussion? 
Leah, yes. Mark, yes. Stephanie, yes. Seth, yes. Dennis, yes. Motion to approve the September 26, 2023 Select Board meeting minutes. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Leah, yes. Mark, yes. Stephanie, yes. Seth, yes. Dennis, yes. Anything else before a motion to adjourn? Nope. And a motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Leah, yes. Mark, <laughs> yes. Stephanie, yes. Seth, yes. Dennis, yes. <laughs> All right. Good luck, Dennis. Good luck to you and Thank family. You. Oh. Uh, no, no news yet. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations a little bit early. Right. Well, it's going to be in the next 24, 48 hours for sure. But awesome. Good night, everybody.